what do you think about the UFO sightings? So the widespread experiences that people have in seeing different phenomena that they sort of, that are mysterious, mm -hmm. that people project ideas about whether it's aliens or not, but they can't explain it. And there's pictures and data and then the government is involved in releasing footage and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that seems to captivate the public. It always, it's imagination. Uh, it, it always do. I mean, you know, there are a number of things that uh, captivate people, especially children, actually, dinosaurs and aliens. Still a child. Yeah, we are also a child at heart. And um, so about UFOs, I am a scientist and I'm a citizen. So I'm going to tell you a couple of things. First, I don't mind talking about that at all, because I think as a scientist, this is extremely interesting because the thing I don't know, I want to learn about it. This is more knowledge. So we all know the statistics about UFOs. 95% of them are just natural phenomenon or things that are being misinterpreted. We know that. Uh, then you have the 2% that might be secret programs by whatever government uh, it's out there. Another percent, say, is about natural phenomenon that we don't know about yet, that we cannot explain. And then there is this tiny percentage that don't fall into all these categories of things. And I think that the, rep the report about the UAPs falls into the same kind of uh, scheme, except that now they have at least some patterns of speed of other things uh, that were in the report. Today, we don't know if these sightings are part of military program or actual UFOs. Um, I always run into that question because, of course, as the director of the Carl Sagan Center at the SETI Institute, I received a number of emails about the subject. People are actually okay. confused about what the SETI Institute is. We are not studying UFOs. Uh, we are studying, we are actually looking for messages. The way I put it, you know, usually is that we are studying extraterrestrial in their natural habitat. <laughs> yes. And and the UFO people are trying to understand whether they invaded our aerial space. Yes. So this is very two very different things. And unfortunately, <laughs> over the years, I actually respect very much people who are trying to go to the bottom of what UFO are following some very scientific ways of doing this. They are very very credible agencies doing this. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there is a folklore around UFOs. And this has been a huge disservice to the scientific community. And this is why you have been having that much pushback for a long time by the scientific community, because no congressman in the world wants to tell their taxpayer that they are supporting something that looking for flying saucers and, you know, mm -hmm. When you see what's happening, it's terrifying. And I am actually concerned, you know, uh, about that relationship that people do between folklore and real search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Um, in fact, it's been so bad that until today, uh, there is no government agency that is actually funding the SETI search. It is a private funded endeavor. What NASA funds right now, which is a progress, is a search for technosignature, which means that when you are looking at the atmosphere of a planet, you look for some disequilibrium that could tell you that something is there. But it's not going to fund a, uh, an institute or whatnot that is looking for messages or, 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 or other things like that. Does that just have to do with a taboo associated with the folklore, as you yes. said? Yes. And I think there was a pushback from the political uh, uh, arena decades ago about that. At the time where all the flying saucers were coming out uh, and then the SETI Institute got it started. So, um, but now there is more of a willingness to look at the UAP, uh, UFO uh, uh, phenomenon from a scientific standpoint. So much so that the government is actually seeking some help from a scientific institution. And there are programs to start looking into those phenomena. And as a scientist, I am interested. What I'm not interested in, again, Carl Sagan comes back here. I don't want to believe. 
I want to know. And so to know, you have to have a real experiment, you have to have observation, and you have uh, uh, things that are done the right way. I don't want to have somebody that start with what if as a question and then turns this what if into the only argument and the only conclusion there is. You understand what I'm saying? But still, I think it's valuable to appreciate the mystery and not deny the mystery, so. No, the mystery is there, but what I don't want is people taking advantage of the public and making money out of folklore. Well, let me flip that, I, I understand. But so there's a folklore in like the stuff I do, AI and robotics, for example. There's a clear fear, Terminator and movies and all those kind of stuff. You could say that I'm very concerned about this miscalibrated uh, understanding of the public of what robots role are in society. Or you could see it as a, let's use a metaphor of a wave. You can say this giant wave that we'll call folklore is a really bad idea. We need to uh, avoid it. We need to hide. We need to build dams. Or you can be a surfer and ride the wave as a scientist. You, it, there, to me, the fact that people are wondering about the mystery of UFOs, it means they're wondering. No, they are. But the thing, I, I, I will stop surfing that wave when it comes back to bite an entire scientific discipline. When it hurts the science, sure. For now, the past 60 years, we were not able to raise money uh, from the government, no grants. It's a discipline that has no postdoc or very little postdoc just because there is a fear of that folklore on the political arena. People don't want to be associated with that because they confuse the two. So I stop there. And as the director of the Carl Sagan Center, I am just very happy to see now that there is a course correction in the government seeking scientific investigators for this kind of issues. And hopefully that will right the ship yeah. there. I love it. I love to see it. But I want, to, and I love our little disagreements. I'm, I'm doing so obviously respectfully and with love and it's just <laughs> it makes it a, for a fun conversation. But I, I think... You know, just like with surfing a wave, there, there, there's some level of, the more you resist it, the worse it is. So I- well, we didn't resist it. Yes. It, it didn't it come from us and we paid the price. I just think that the role of a scientist in part in the 21st century, when we talked about social media, is to direct this sense of wonder that people have into a direction of the rigors of science. I think but we do that pretty well. I would disagree. I don't I would, think SETI so. SETI does much better, but there's other places in science where- The search si for life is fairly, it's a fairly easy place to you know draw the wonder of people. Yes, Because yes, it, it's a profound question that pretty much everybody has. But I think, I just want to highlight the fact that I think a lot of scientists, my colleagues, friends, think that all you need to do is science. All you need to do is this, the, the scientific process, the peer review process, the, the, the data, and so on. But I think communication is actually a fundamental part of the process. Because oh, yeah. um, it has to do with funding, but it also has to do with like, we're, we're a bunch of humans trying to ask big questions, trying to figure this whole puzzle out. And I totally agree. We do have more public presentation at the Institute than peer reviewed articles. And believe me, we have lots of peer-reviewed articles. So our scientists are out there and they are sharing the wonder of discoveries. And it's so easy these days. I mean, there is not one day. Tell me about writing a book right now about the search for life in the universe. I mean, it's almost every single day I had to correct something <laughs> in the chapters I was writing. 